So that was class P, the class of decision problems that can be solved in polynomial time. So now we're going to move on to another class, and this class tends to confuse people, and I think there's several reasons for that. One is that it's, it's a strange definition, and it's not maybe the first definition that you would have thought of if you were coming up with this stuff. There are, there are super important theoretical and, I mean, in part historical reasons for why this definition is the way it is. I mean, it actually is the right definition. It actually does tell us something. But it just happens to be a definition that confuses a lot of people. So this is the class that you may have heard of called NP. So a lot of people think, oh, well, P is the class of polynomially solvable, solvable problems. So NP must mean non-polynomial uh, problems. No, this does not mean non-polynomial, OK? You have, to, you have to trust me in this. this. When I write NP, the N does not mean non-polynomial, OK? So this is, this is not, and I'm going to write this in big letters, not non-polynomial. Okay, there, if, if you're taking 5700, you're going to see this stuff, um, and, and uh, hopefully you get into some more detail in there about what this means. But what the, non, what the N means here is actually non-deterministic. And so the class NP is formally defined as the class of decision problems that can be solved by a non-deterministic Turing machine, which, which is just its language that's outside of the, the scope of topics I like to talk about in the algorithms class here. So I'm going to call I'm going to call the class NP just NP. I'm not going to focus on what non-deterministic means. Uh, but here's here's the definition. Here's a definition of NP that will work for our purposes here. So I'm going to say class NP is the class of all decision problems such that if an instance has a yes answer, right? If it is a yes instance, then that instance has a proof and proof, we're going to get into what proof means, but it has some kind, of a, some kind of a certificate, some kind of a proof that can be verified in polynomial time, where that proof can show us that it is a yes instance. So let me write this down, and then we'll chew on this and, and, and uh, kind of unpack it as much as possible. So class NP is the class of problems, uh, of decision problems, such that, and, and I'm going to write this as, as two things here. So this is, there's two, two, two conditions here. So such that, one, instances whose answer is yes, or I'll just call them yes instances. Yes instances. All right, so what I write in condition two here only applies to yes instances. We don't know anything about no instances. But yes instances have a proof, have proofs that are verifiable in polynomial time. So there, there are some, some deep nuances embedded in the kind of the technical definitions of these. For our purposes, though, in this class, in this, in this algorithms course, when I write proofs, I'm just going to think of that as solutions. Okay, so here's, here's the idea. So, so always, always kind of think of this as solutions. So think of it as, as something like this. Suppose you have a, an instance of a problem. If that is a yes instance, then I can come to you and hand you a solution to the problem and say, hey, this is a solution to your problem. And then in polynomial time, you can check, you can check to see whether the thing I gave you, the, the, the candidate solution to your problem, actually is a solution to your problem or whether it is not a solution to your problem. So there is a way that I can prove to you in polynomial time that the answer that that the instance that you have is a yes instance, um, if it is a yes instance. So so this is a this is a little bit this is a little bit subtle, and we're going to do some examples. We'll talk about a couple different kinds of NP problems here. Um, but one thing to notice 
is that our problem, prob1, is in NP. Okay? So the very first example of an NP problem I want to give you is a problem that also happens to be in P. Okay? And so this suggests something about the relationship between the class P and the class NP. Okay, so here's, here's a fact for you. Prob1, and, and if you've forgotten what Prob1 is, I'll, I'll go back up to it in a second one, in, in a second. But Prob1, the problem we defined earlier, is in NP. Okay, so what's Prob1? Let's, let's take a look back up here at Prob1. So Prob1 is, is this one. Given an array A and a threshold M, does that array contain an element that is greater than or equal to M? Okay, super simple problem. We talked about why it is in P earlier, right? It's in P because if I give you an array and a threshold, you can just walk down the array and see if there's anything in it that's bigger than the threshold. So why is it in P? Well, one of the ways that we can argue that it's in, or sorry, why is it in NP? So one of the ways that we can argue that it is in NP is suppose you have an array and a threshold, right? So here's, here's the setup, suppose Suppose you have an array, and let's just name the array, okay? So here's, here's the array, uh, 0, 3, minus 7, and, and 10. So you have an array and a threshold, and we'll make the threshold 2. Uh, so there's, there's, there's your problem instance. So you have, you have an instance of the problem. So rather than saying an array, let me just say an instance of the problem of prob1. Okay, so there's, there's your instance. If it is a yes instance, then I can come to you and I can give you a piece of information that you can check in polynomial time. And that piece of information can, can verify that it is, it is a yes instance. So here's the instance of the problem. Now what I'll do is I'll come to you with a proof that this is a yes instance, right? We happen to know as humans, and because this is a simple problem, we happen to know this is a yes instance. So let me just, let me just write in parentheses, clearly a yes instance. Okay, why is it a yes instance? Well, there's, there's two elements in the array that are bigger than the threshold, right? The, the 3 and the 10 are both bigger than 2. So now here is the proof, right? Here is my proof that this is yes, right? What's the proof? My proof is an index, okay? So my the index that I will give you is the index 1. The index 1. Right? So what is the index one? Well, it is the location in the array of an element that, ver that verifies that this is a yes instance of the problem. Okay? What does it mean to be a yes instance? Well, it means that there is an index in the array that contains a larger, uh, something that's bit greater than or equal to the threshold. And so I say, hey, go, go look in index one. So now, so I've given you this proof. So you have the problem instance sitting in front of you. You have this array and this threshold. And you say, I don't want to deal with this thing. I don't want to solve the problem. Prove to me that this is a yes instance. So what I'll come, what I'll, what I'll do is I'll come and, and say, hey, here is, here, is, uh, here is an index. Now go check that index. And you'll be able to check that index you know, in polynomial time, in this case, in constant time. You'll be able to go check that instance and, or that index and, and if I've given you the right index, that will verify to you that it is a yes instance of the problem. Okay, so now you now what do you do? You check, and I'm going to call this I'm going to call this index i. So let's just let's just uh, name it. So i is one. So now you check a i. Well, this is a uh, at at element one. This is three, and sure enough. You just verified that uh, you just verified that uh, there's something larger than than the threshold, right? And sure enough, a of one is greater than m. So 
in constant time, and constant time is polynomial time, right? This is smaller than some polynomial. So in constant time, um, you've used the proof, used my proof, my proof to verify that uh, instance is a yes. Okay, so this is it's a it's a it's a strange and slightly involved way of showing that this problem is in NP, and it's and it's referring directly to the definition we gave. So to recap this this segment, a problem is in NP. Not if it has no polynomial time algorithm, but rather if it ha if yes instances of the problem have proofs that can be verified in polynomial time. Another way to think about it is that the class NP is the class of problems whose correct solutions can be verified in polynomial time. Again, everything is a little bit more, more involved once you dig into the guts of this stuff, but for our purposes, that's gonna suffice for this class.